She is thick. It's a little bruised. She's a little, you know, a little damaged, but that's okay. Okay? She still deserves love. All right, let's go in for a bite. It's gonna be a big bite. And welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. Today, guys, I wanted to make a sushi burrito. I remember making some form of a sushi burrito recipe when I first started my YouTube channel, which is like literally in 2015. Where has the time gone? I have not watched that video for a very long time. I do not watch my old videos because it might be a little cringe. So I thought, hey, we need to revisit this sushi burrito situation. I mean, yeah, I think I've improved somewhat in my cooking process. So hopefully it's even better than what I did back in the day. So I'm gonna make a sushi burrito, vegan style. It's gonna be affordable, it's gonna be easy, it's going to be delicious. And the written recipe will be available in a blog post that will be linked down below. So make sure you check that out. And before we jump into the recipe, I just wanna remind you guys that I have a podcast Yes, if you did not know, I have a podcast with my best friend, Daniel, and it is called The Savage Podcast, S-A-V-E-G, and it is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen to your podcast. We also have a YouTube channel where we actually do video versions of the podcast, so definitely, definitely check it out. And we talk about kind of latest trending topics. Veganism gets in there, but it's not like the main focus of our podcast. We just kind of talk about whatever we want to talk about, okay? It's a fun little time. We do weekly episodes, and yeah, so, a I'll link the podcast information down below. Anyway, yeah, let's make some sushi burritos. All right, guys, so the first thing we need is some rice, right? We're gonna make sushi burritos. So I have some cooked sushi rice already. You wanna use sushi rice, my friends, or short grain white rice, because when you cook it, it is sticky, as you can see here. Sushi rice is different from other types of rice, so make sure you use sushi rice. I do recommend, especially if you're like a beginner, to use uh, white sushi rice or white short grain rice because it is stickier than brown rice. So I have it cooked already and I'm gonna add some things in it, okay? So first, let's add some rice vinegar. Mm -hmm. Rice vinegar and I like to add just a little pinch of salt and a little pinch of sugar. And my rice is still kind of warm. I kind of like to do it when it's still a little warm and that way it kind of mixes things better, okay? It's easier to mix everything. So there we go. And I do use a rice cooker to cook up my sushi rice. If you don't have a rice cooker, what are you doing? How are you living your life? I don't understand. I will link my Amazon storefront down below if you want to grab the one that I use. I am Korean, so I am biased toward Korean rice cookers. Um, but you can use whatever. There we go. Ooh, see, it's very sticky. Let me give it a taste. Mmm, so good. All right, so I'm gonna leave this on the side and then let's make what I'm gonna put into it. So, there's a few options. Today I'm gonna make my chickpea tuna, which I actually think that's what I made in my very first sushi burrito thing as well. But the reason why I'm choosing chickpea tuna is because it's affordable. It's very affordable, it's so good. You cannot go wrong, okay, with a chickpea tuna salad. Super easy to make. You can just throw everything into a blender or a food processor and then just process it. Or you could do everything by hand as well. You can just like mash it with a fork. Another option you could try is doing my crab meat recipe using tofu, which is also really easy. That recipe is on my California roll recipe blog post, which I'll link down below. So you can make that as your protein source. You could also make my salmon flake recipe, which I'll also link down below. So you have a few different options. This one is just a classic chickpea tuna. So what I do is add some chickpeas. I have a can of chickpeas here that I've drained and rinsed. I'm gonna add it into a food processor. And again, if you don't have a food processor or you don't wanna use one, you could actually just mash your chickpeas with a fork. But I like to just throw everything into a food processor. And then I have some celery. Now, if you're gonna do this by hand, you just wanna dice up your celery nice and fine. But because we're throwing it in a food processor, I don't need to do that. And then we have some red onion. You can use regular onion as well, but again, if you are going to do this by hand, just dice it up, okay? And then, this part is optional, but if you really want that kind of tuna-y flavor, I love adding in a nori sheet, and I just kind of rip it up, and I just throw it in here as well. Now, we throw it on here. By the way, this thing, this ninja, I've had it for years, it's still working really well. Not 
I just pulse it a few times. And then what I do is I just kind of, ah, see, it's kind of like overflowy. So I just kind of mix it up a little bit. And what I love about this recipe is that you could use this for so many different things. You could just make like a little chickpea tuna sandwich. You can make chickpea tuna melt, make sushi, sushi burrito, put it on a cracker. And I like to kind of keep some chunks in there because we don't want it to be like super smooth. Like we're not looking for like a mousse, okay? We're looking for like a mashed chickpea situation. I think that looks pretty good. All right, let me show you. Ooh la la. There you go. See, you can see it's not fully like fully mashed, but it's nice and blended well together. Okay, now, oh God, it already tastes tuna-y. What is it about chickpeas? Why does it have a tuna taste? It's very strange. So we're gonna add this into a bowl. Here we go. And this recipe itself is already on my blog. So again, that'll be linked as well. If you just wanted to make this. There you go, chickpea tuna. There's some chunks in there, but that's all good. So now in here, we're gonna add vegan mayo. I will say, vegan mayo has improved significantly since the last time I made sushi burritos on my channel. And then there's Dijon mustard. When in doubt, add Dijon. This part is very much optional, but this is kelp powder, which is basically powdered kelp. <laughs> kelp is like a form of seaweed, and it's gonna give more of that seafoody flavor. Very optional, but if you really want that kind of tuna-y taste, you can add this as well. And then we got salt and pepper, and give it a mix. Oof. And again, I'm gonna leave other options for different types of fillings that you could add in here, because you don't have to make this one, you can make anything else. I have so many different ideas. You could do my vegan smoked tofu recipe, again, the flaky salmon, the vegan crab meat. I mean, there's so many options, but oof, this one is the most accessible, I think, and probably the cheapest. Let's give it a try. Mm, so good. Mm. I'm gonna add a little more salt, actually. Just a tiny bit, nothing crazy. Oh my, it's so good. There we go, okay. So there is the tuna. And now, let's work on the other stuff. All right, guys, so again, this is your burrito. You can add whatever you want. I wanna add a nice, colorful mix of vegetables, okay? So first I have this carrot, okay? This is how I'm going to cut it. I kinda like to cut it thinly on like a angle so that we have this lovely kind of coin shaped sort of situation here, this oval shape. And then I just do thin layers. Please do not cut your fingers like that. You can also just like use a julienne peeler on your carrots. That'll just make it easier if you're not really comfortable with slicing. Um, but this is how I cut my carrots and also how I cut the cucumbers. So again, just thin slices like so, and then stack them. This is actually very therapeutic and it's a good thing to practice if you, because I used to, guys, if you, if any of you have been around since the beginning, people always gave me so much crap for being really bad at chopping. And like, I would chop like this, you know, like this, and people are like, oh my God, you're gonna break your, you're gonna cut yourself. So I've learned, guys. Look at me improving, thanks to you and your consistent comments. <laughs> I have improved on my chopping skills. There you go. But it's actually kind of fun. Sometimes I enjoy it. Most of the time I'm lazy, but sometimes I enjoy it. There you go, again, like that. And now we have some lovely thinly sliced carrots. And then for bell pepper, what I do is I just cut it in half and then I take out the seeds or whatever, and then I just kind of cut this part, you can use it for something else, save it. But then that way we have these lovely kind of matchstick. We can cut these into matchsticks. So we don't have like too many bits sticking out. And it's just looking nice and flat and nice and thin. That's how I would cut this as well. There we go. And then we also have some purple cabbage that I've already cut up here again into thin slices. Look at that, beautiful. And the cucumbers that I've already cut up, again, similar, same method as the carrots. And then I have some questionable looking avocado. Okay, but this is the only avocado I had left. So it's a little bruised. She's a little, you know, a little damaged, but that's okay, okay? She still deserves love. So what about that? And now we can basically put it together. Simple. We're gonna need, I would use two nori sheets. I've seen people use one, but I feel like we're gonna use two, okay? 
So we're gonna start with one. I found my sushi mat. I thought I had lost it, but I found it. But I think you can make it without. If you don't have one, it's gonna be okay, hopefully. So I usually do the rough side in, okay? And the smooth side out. So rough side in, just lay it down like this. And then we want a bowl of water beside us because we want to dip our fingers in the water. Otherwise, the sushi rice will stick all over your fingers. So that's one thing to keep in mind. So now we're going to place our sushi rice that we've seasoned earlier on there and then again, dampen the fingers and then just very patiently and with lots of love, spread it. Try to spread it evenly in a thin layer, okay? So kind of be patient. It doesn't have to be perfect as well. Actually, I think sushi burritos are a little bit more forgiving if you've never made sushi before because you don't really have to cut it up. And because you're using two things of nori, you kind of like, it's okay, you mess up a little bit and you overfill it. Because I think that's one of the things that is difficult is like figuring out how much to fill your sushi bowl. And oftentimes I always overfill, even today, even, even now, even though I've made lots of sushi now at this point. And the difference is also, we're gonna cover the entire thing. Whereas if I was making a regular sushi, I would leave a little space here of the seaweed. But I'm gonna cover the entire thing because we're making a sushi burrito, we're gonna make it big and again, Keep wetting your fingers if you feel like it's getting sticky. I think that looks pretty good. Again, it's never gonna be perfect, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Here we go. Okay, here's what we do. Now we start adding in our delicious fixins, okay? I'm gonna start with nice, generous amount of our chickpea tuna, okay? I'm gonna do like, I don't know, maybe about, I wanna make it pretty, pretty big and fat. Hopefully that's not a mistake that I'll regret later on. And then we're gonna add course, our different vegetables that we prepared. We have our carrot, beautiful. We have our cucumber. We have purple cabbage. Look at this color, guys. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> All right. Then we have our red bell pepper and the avocado. Can't forget that. And oof, see, it's very, very big and fat. Ooh, look at that. Okay, so now I'm a little nervous, <laughs> but what I do is I take the other nori sheet and I'm going to wet the ends here just a bit. Basically what I'm going to do is make one giant long nori sheet and then I'm going to lift this up and then I'm going to stick the new nori sheet there. Okay, now this is the moment of truth, guys. Okay, I gotta get, my, get myself ready. Get myself ready for this. This is a... It's always a nerve-wracking moment. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, so basically you just wanna fold it one time, like so. Give it a little squeeze. Ooh. Keep going. Give it another little squeeze. And then just get it to the very end here. That's exploding just a little bit. Then what I do is at the very end, now that we have this giant thing, again, we're going to dampen the ends just a tiny bit with water and then give it one final little squeeze. Now you don't want to squeeze too hard, otherwise it's going to explode everywhere. There we go. Ooh, she is thick. She is thick. You could just eat it like this. I mean, yeah, but let's, let's be civilized human beings and let's cut this in half and see what it looks like. All right, guys, so option, you could just eat it like this, or you could take some parchment paper. I have a large piece of parchment paper here, and I'm just going to lay it down. You could do this with aluminum as well, or aluminium, as you British people call it. And then, I think I'm just gonna roll it like this. I think this is how I would do it. Okay. Roll it up. And then, like so. And that way, why is it? Oh, okay. There's a carrot sticking out. Tighten it up on the sides, like so. Then let's see what it looks like if we cut it in half. Oh, I'm nervous. Ooh. Can cut the. <laughs> the moment of truth. Ooh! <laughs> Look at that. That looks so good. What do you guys think? One thing I forgot is to add some sort of like soy sauce or something in there or like a spicy sauce. You could add some sriracha. You could add some sriracha mayo in there as well. Lots of options, lots of options. Okay, but we gotta try this. We gotta eat this. It looks so good. All right guys, 
let's try. So again, if you want to, you can just drizzle a little bit of soy sauce or a little bit of teriyaki sauce in there, but I'm just gonna dip, 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 boop, boop. Ooh, look at that. That looks delicious. All right, let's go in for a bite. It's gonna be a big bite. <laughs> mm. Mm. That's so good. Mm. It's so good. The chickpea tuna goes so well with everything. The veggies are nice and crunchy, nice and fresh. It's a it's a big roll. Mm -hmm. Definitely try this out. The recipe will be linked below. You have to try it out. It's so much fun. And it's a great lunch to take to go. And you can just eat it wherever, okay? Sushi to go. Handheld sushi. Who doesn't love handheld sushi? All right, you guys. So that is it for the sushi burrito recipe. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll have the blog post link below as mentioned. So make sure you check it out if you want the written recipe and all the measurements and everything. And if you do enjoy this recipe, make sure you give my blog post a five star review because those help me a lot. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And of course, guys, don't forget to check out my podcast with my friend Daniel. It is called The Savage Podcast and we have weekly episodes. I'll have the podcast info linked below so you can listen to us. You can watch us on YouTube, whatever you want to do. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy this recipe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.